Welcome to one of Golf Channel's 12 nights at the Academy. It is our gift to you. And look what we're delivering this time. <laughs> PGA Tour winner Rocco Mediate and his longtime instructor, Jimmy Ballard. They've been working together since 2005 or just before that. Mm -hmm. And you have accomplished so much in such a short amount of time. And your teaching method, Jimmy, is quite simple. Yes, I think it is. We try to keep it simple. We want people to understand that the golf swing is not complicated, that uh, it's, an, it's an athletic motion, and most people would do it pretty naturally if they didn't try to do certain things that keep them from being natural. You know, head down, stiff left arm, that type of thing. Rocco, you waited until right around that time to join forces with mm -hmm. Jimmy because of a bad back. Yes. And it has changed your life. Oh, yeah. Well, I don't have a bad back anymore. <laughs> um, you know, as we know, golf is insane as, as far as on our body. It's bad. It's, it's hard to do. It's just an unnatural motion. But the more you can get rid of some of those unnatural angles and bad setups and bent over and everything that we're going to talk about, it becomes easier, much easier, and easier on your body. So that was, that's what we're looking to help, especially on the body, because it messes you up. If, you're, if you move, make bad moves at a golf ball repeatedly, it will hurt you. And we've seen some of our best players go down from it. Um, I, I, it's just the easiest way to move a golf club. I call it moving, not swinging. Mm. Um, and if, if, and these things that we're going to we'll show everybody today are simple to understand. Hard to do because when you change something, it takes time. You know, it's not like an immediate, you, it's not perfectly, you can't do it like too slow. You got to understand the motion and then work on it and it becomes much easier all right as for me yeah you've been teaching uh, prominently now since the 1970s you've worked with a number of high profile names major champions Sebi, curtis we could go on and on let's talk about the method that you started with and stay with to this day you call it remaining connected right connectivity explain well the golf swing as i say we starts from what we call a brace connected address it, it, it starts with a setup and the thing we always want is we always want the right foot turned in. We always want the inside heel measurements, outside shoulder width. That's for an athletic, to make an athletic motion. We found shoulder width is the distance it takes to make the correct coil and just get into the leg the proper way. So to do that, we also have a posture. You must have good posture. We want people like they're holding weights, like they were going to curl weights. We want their fanny under them. We want them under them because that's the only way your legs can work. You can't work your legs if you stick your fanny out. So it all comes back to set up, getting your body in the right position to make that move. And so to do that, we just tell people right foot square, left toe slightly out. That'll help you to get through the ball. We want the inside heel measurements, outside shoulder width, and then we want good postures. If you were standing here curling weights, you would never hold anything heavy this way. You hold everything heavy here. So getting in the right position to get our body to work correctly, that's the whole key. And it's a pre-swing thought. Yeah, it's Where huge. were you versus where you are now with Jimmy? I was a tiny bit narrow. <laughs> I was a tiny bit narrow and bent over. Back was terrible. It was the end of 04. I didn't know what to do. I, was, I, was, I didn't know if I could retire because what the heck else am I going to do? I don't even know how to play golf, basically. Um, so I wanted to keep doing it. And Leonard Thompson and I had been talking for years about going to see Jimmy. But I was doing okay. And I said, no, nah, I'm fine. And um, once that happened, I called Leonard and I said, LT, I need to go see Jim. And he goes, we've been waiting for this to happen. Mm -hmm. So we went down and he saw some, st you know, obviously I was kind of narrow. I was bent over and I was far away from it. It felt better to me because my back was, it just always feels better for some reason to be narrow. But what it does, what it does is puts more stress on, on, on my spine because you're, anytime you're narrow, you're twisty, you twist more, you turn around in a circle, which we do not want to do. I don't even think about turning a golf swing. I know it's kind of weird, but I don't think about it at all. I think about back. So what all we really started with was width of stance, shoulders inside my feet, I, like, like Jim just said, and posture. So now I've gotten rid of all this and bent over everything. You know, it's, it's all right here. There's not a lot. There's angles in a golf swing, but there's not a lot right here. You know, this isn't drop down. My hips aren't put. Everything's dead square and in center. That's what he taught me, especially sternum, center, what do you want to call it, center. So everything starts from center and it moves. It's one, two. There's not 47 parts of a golf swing, there's two. A backswing and a downswing, the finish is all a result of what you do. We had a conversation before this show started and we wanted to get from you tonight tips for high level, mid level, and low level handicappers. And you said, we only teach to one level. It's one level, it works for every person, whether it's a touring professional or a guy just, just starting golf, it's all the same. What do you That's have? the beauty of it. Well. Good. It's the fundamentals Sorry. of the, you know, so we call the fundamentals and uh, that works. It, we want everybody to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. When we look at a golf swing, 
and, and I first give an overview, I show everyone how the triangle is maintained throughout the swing. And if you take that and understand, people would do that naturally if they simply kept their elbows down, got into their right leg, and got their elbows down and got to the left. And as soon as the elbows are down, then your body is free to move, like throwing a medicine ball underhanded. But when you get your arms around or off your body mm -hmm. or your elbows out, mm -hmm. there's no way the body can coordinate with it. Yeah, let, so, me show, let me show you what he means. What, what we mean is, as far as structure and setup, which is width of stance, kind of braced like we we're talking about, braced in there. My knees aren't out, they're in a little, just a touch. So I'm this way, so and I'm tall as I can be. So what we mean about elbows down, left arm on my body, my elbow's not pointing out, it's pointing down to my, I guess, my left hip side mm -hmm. somewhere there, right? Mm -hmm. So what, I'm, what, what we're talking about, if the elbows stay down, watch the golf club go up. Okay, the golf club's up here now. What, we, what Jimmy's always taught, the golf club now is light. It's so balanced. Now, it's balanced and light. So now it can be thrown any way I want to throw it. Hard, fast, easy, slow, doesn't matter. Timing means nothing if your golf club's in the right place. Once I get my elbows sideways, now look at the club. Now it's heavy, I can't do it. So now I'm gonna move it at 100 miles an hour, good luck. So if the elbows stay down on both sides, to where if, if, if I feel like I'm back into my right and up over to my left, I got nothing. There's nothing here, I'm all done. There's no weight on my right, I got no stress in my spine, it's simple. Just that simple. Simple, simple, simple. And all mm -hmm. the sockets and joints work correctly. Yeah, there's nothing out they, of, they out of sync. It's easy to get out of whack in this crazy game we play, but this way is the, it's the most efficient by far. Let's yeah. start with the left arm and its role. Well, you know, Hogan, when he changed his swing, he talked about that he had half a left arm. And he talked about on the Ed Sullivan Show that the arms were, and were connected to the body at the elbows, not at the shoulders. And then he just talked about move to your right and move to your left with your elbows on your body. And that's really all it is, but it has to be posture. And the left arm connection is tied into the left lap. Once you tie your arm into your left lat like you're holding something heavy, it would be as though if I wanted to backhand someone. All I would do is lay my arm here, this left lat would move into my right leg and I'd hit you with my right side. Mm -hmm. I would never get back here and pull my arm or I would never get my arm away from me to hit you hard. My arm would lay connected to my shoulder. I'd lay my arm on my body and I'd hit you with my big muscles. Yeah, try not to take it personally that he wants to back you. Right, right. Well, well, you're standing there, not me. So it's not my Usually you. you. Are, and and what, what, what he means by that is, and it's amazing, you know, the elbow's down, this left arm's down this way. I remember he made me walk around for like a week like this. <laughs> like, walk around, hey, how are you guys doing? I'm good right here. Right, Everybody good. wants to shake so, your hand. So I'm like <laughs> this. So instead of the elbow being out, which causes round, you know, the fifth the, the joint's this way, it goes around you. Fist joint's down and the right elbow's not this way, it's out. It's like you're shaking hands with somebody. I'm not gonna put it underneath me, because in my opinion, it follows your rib cage. I don't wanna follow my rib cage, it's gonna go around me. So it's not gonna go up. So what he's talking about is structure in this way to where I'm up, and I feel stress in my lats. All these big, small little lats and all this stuff and everything else, feel it up here. Where that are the big ones, Rock? Where the big ones? I don't have any. <laughs> <laughs> that carries the club. See, my arms and hands don't, I don't ever, you never see this happen. See how fast it carries the club. So as soon as I'm set up properly, I can move the club back and through. But if I'm not tall and wide, let's say I get narrow and bent over, I lose all my structure. This is mush, more than it usually is. So this is, this is mush. So now all of a sudden, my arms and hands come into play, and I'm dead because I can't trust them. But I can trust all, this big, all the big muscles and my legs and everything move in this golf club. That's what I want. I don't ever think of these. These just hold, my arms and hands, my hands just hold the club. Uh, Jimmy has taught me that it's measuring up. Once I'm set here, and we, we talk about it all the time, once I'm measured up in my setup, now it's just a matter of movement and motion. And I want to keep the same, in other words, the club never gets in and deep behind me most of the time. The club never goes out and away from me. I'm disconnected, you see? It goes straight, you know, kind of straight back, I guess, but I'm moving it with all this. So center moves it back. And if I'm measured up properly and set up properly, it's going to be right, it's going to be right in, the, in the numbers as far as hitting, and there's not going to be any disturbance on the ground. Because I'm measured up and I stay tall, stay tall throughout the entire swing. Everything stays tall. You, Hogan always talked about being taller at impact, not smaller. Mm -hmm. Think about that. You have to be up to hit down. Uh -huh. In other words, you have to be up to hit down. Yeah. If you're down, you're hitting up. Yeah, and that's bad. So you, well, you have know. to always have good posture to be in a position to hit a descending blow. The ball's on the ground. Okay, we got a great tip from you earlier. We're looking for another one. What do you have? Well, 
I think the best way to understand how to get into your right leg and core and not sway, which people have always accused me of, I think you have to understand with the setup we've already talked about, your left shoulder never goes under, your left shoulder never goes high. That would be a sway. We don't teach that. We teach the left knee and the left lat makes a little six inch move into your right leg and your right arm and shoulder hinges up to hit down. So therefore, the only way I can hit down is for my elbows to be down to go that way. And if you don't get into your leg, how can you go forward? Mm -hmm. So that's the whole key. It's not a sway, it's a coil. You can't turn because you can't turn from two sockets and two joints, period, laws of physics. So you coil into the set of the leg and uncoil. And back-to-back -back U.S. Opens for Curtis Strange just does not lie. Mm -hmm. uh, we still have another incredible tip coming mm -hmm. your way from Jimmy Ballard, a personal one he received from the Hawk, calls it the best he ever received. Stay tuned for that. For the best in golf instruction, go to GolfChannel.com. We have teased it. I have heard it. It is awesome, but now it's time to deliver it to our viewers. The best tip you ever received, and it's hard to believe you did get it from Ben Hogan, but you did. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. It was 1956, and he was standing on the practice tee hitting balls. And he would take, a, he, was, he was a chain smoker, and he'd always put the cigarette in his mouth when he hit. And he had a reason for that, because that made him keep his chin up and keep his posture <laughs> better. And he'd put it in there, and he would take the club, and he'd put it on his right hip, and he'd lay his arm like this, and he would go like this twice, and then he'd go like this. And then he would hit a ball going like this. And what it was, he was rehearsing his old swing before he'd changed it. And if he started changing in 45, he always changed directions this way, mm -hmm. which left him back blocked and flipped. So in later life, he learned to keep the elbow down, connect it, and get the right hip to hit it. And then he later said, I wish I had three right hands to hit it with, because <laughs> the freedom was there once this got down and the inner force got out of the way and it didn't go this way. Yeah, it's fantastic. And, and Rocco, you believe, don't you, that you can get through life on one golf swing. We see a lot of players yeah, reshaping, retooling, yeah. resubscribing to new methods, but you think you just want yeah, the trick. It's too simple to under it's so simple to understand and it's it makes so much it's it's technically correct as we've talked about. So what Jimmy was talking about there is let's just say I get back into a good position on the backswing. Let's just say I get back here. And anytime my hips move first, I'm dead. Look at your spine. My chest moves sideways and backwards. Ow. Ow. Back pain. And then it's back here. Anytime a chest moves sideways, these babies are going to speed up now. One of two things will happen. A quick hook or oh no and I'll block. So the feeling that I love to get is once I do get back up here, I push from right in here in my in right instep. I push forward. So once I go here, as long as I push forward this way, all of a sudden, everything's where it belongs. Everything's stre I'm stressed here. Everything's tight this way. So once I push, I go this way. So it looks like once I'm back, once I'm back to the top, I push forward this way. Look where I finish. It's all moving forward. I'm trying to make a ball go at a target, for instance, right? I don't ever want to stand back here and try it. I want to go back and up to it. I always want to finish this way with almost my weight on my toes or the ball on my foot, not on my heel. Once I'm back to the top, I push forward this way. Look where I finish. Yep, and just like that, Rocco Mediate donning the full gear, except you're missing half of your pants. <laughs> I did. Well, I'm wearing shorts. I'm a, I'm a rebel. I'm a rebel, Cal. <laughs> the clean-shaven Rocco yeah. Mediate. I'm Definitely sure you've heard this story, but yes, his legs are more clean-shaven than mine, and I'm sure you are. Jealous, <laughs> jealous. <laughs> uh, but you're also wearing this swing aid that has been very instrumental mm -hmm. in the revival of your career. Yeah, V-Harness is fantastic. It, it's like I said, it doesn't stop you from doing the wrong thing. It makes you do the right thing. That's huge. Because we want this, we want you to understand how it works and what it can make, what it feels. It, fe it makes you feel what we've talked about for the last 20 or 30 minutes. Right, and what is that? How does it work, Jimmy? Well, it keeps his radius. When he sets up that V cord, it should be taunt. And throughout the swing, and we've always mm -hmm. told him that if you had a club set up, if you had a, a string in the end of the club to the placket of your shirt, mm -hmm. that distance, distance should remain the same distance right. throughout the swing. That keeps your radius and keeps your arc. If you change that, you've changed your radius and changed mm -hmm. your arc, and you've changed your plane. And best wishes after that. But what, and I feel that what I was just, what I feel is with my normal setup, and that once the club goes into the ground or touches, just touches the ground, see how tight they are. The V cords are tight, so I want to keep them tight. 
So how can I do that? I can't stand still and do it. Look at them. It's over. But I can, if I move back into my right, they're still taut, and back to my left, and I keep them like that as much as I can. I love when the right one is tight through the through swing. I love that feel when I, it's pushed out this way. So hitting balls with every single club, uh, actually in putting too, you can do the same thing. It keeps your, your structure, I, I like to keep calling it, it's my word of the day, structure. So it keeps your structure to where if I keep them both sides, it makes me do what I do. And um, I laughed about it because when we first built, you know, when we messed around and built it, hadn't hit any balls with it yet, I hit a ball with it and I went, holy crap, this thing does work. Well, it has been a real treat to work with Rocco Media, not just here, obviously, on this show, but as a commentator as well. <laughs> yeah. You blew us away at Kapalua back in yeah. 2007. That, that was cool. That was fun. The, the funnest part was with Trevor's ball on 16. Do not become part of the Kelly, story, Rock. I mean, Rock, don't be a part of the story. <laughs> I'm going in, Kel. I'm going in. You just can't so help yourself. I couldn't stop it. I have to take care of the people. My, my boys are still my guys. Yeah. Yeah. I want to help them as much as I can. You had his so back. I, but congratulations to you on getting back to Kapalua, this time as a winner again yeah, on the PGA that's, Tour. Yeah, that's special. Um, Did you think you could do it? I I hoped I could do it. I didn't know. Obviously, none of us. Well, I guess some of us don't know. Maybe some do. But I, I didn't know. Um, and I've had some interesting times, but I, I knew I had the ability to do it. Whether it was going to happen or not was another story, and it did. So, and in an insane way, as, as you saw. So I'm ecstatic. I'm, I'm a thousand years old, and I get to play forever, basically. And I love, my, I love my job. I love being with the boys. You have a number of majors on your resume, Jimmy. You I've, still think this guy can, can pick one off, oh, don't you? No question. I've yeah. let him down. No I'm question. sorry. You wanted, been, you wanted the U.S. Open. You almost yeah, got the yeah, U.S. Open. Yeah. You almost some had some guy beat me. I don't know who that guy was. I don't know. <laughs> but Jimmy's been, Jimmy and Lori um, Ballard have been very dear, dear friends. And very, I mean, I wouldn't be standing here without, I mean, it's been so, we have so much fun too. That's the cool thing. We have a lot of fun. So it's, hopefully it'll keep going. I, I, I don't, I'm not going anywhere, so. Well, within, <laughs> within three months of you guys joining forces, I'm going to read a quote that you gave directly. I do know that if I can get into contention again, I am not afraid to do it. You're mm. talking about winning. Right. Obviously, you have instilled a lot of confidence back in this man right here. Well, his confidence comes from knowing what he's doing. He yes. understands why he hits a bad shot, why he hits a good shot. He, and that's what I want all my players to do. I want them to understand their swing. Yeah. That's the key to great instruction and great teaching and, and giving great knowledge. And I know that if I'm in the hunt, obviously I'm playing good, so why can't I keep playing good? You know what I mean? No matter who's on the other side of the, or hitting, hitting on the tee with me, I don't care who that is. It doesn't matter. It's just a matter of can I get it done. But with the knowledge I have, I think when I get, I know when I get there, I can. Now, if I get beat, no problem. I just don't want to beat myself. That's the hard part. You beat everyone, right. and it was soundly at thefries.com. <laughs> you did fun. get back into that winner's circle. Earlier I said he hold out three of the four days. Four. Yeah, of thanks the four a lot. That's days. Great, yeah. He was on. <laughs> Rocco, thanks so much for spending time with us. Thank Congratulations you. on your sixth win. And thank you so much, thank Jimmy, you, for Kelly. sharing with us. Good luck with your academy down thank in you. Key Largo. He doesn't have it too bad, does he? <laughs> thanks, guys. Thank you. <laughs>